Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to explore some new ways of looking at your rental housing situation. Do you live in a dump or some hell hole from the nether reaches of Mordor? I have spent the bulk of my life living in this kind of housing situation, and there are a few pointers that I'd like to share about all of this from my extensive experience with these type of rentals. Maybe your circumstances will change. Maybe they won't. The key is to learn to live in this present moment, and if your dwelling sucks, things need to change. Most people I have come across through the years have this philosophy that because it is a rental situation, that they're not going to spend any money fixing it up because it isn't their place. You have to re-examine this belief for a minute. Ask yourself the question, how important are you? I would say that you're very important and you deserve to live in a better place. It doesn't matter if you're only going to stay in your present circumstance for a few months or it turns into a few years. It's still your home. You are important and the grand scheme of things, the rent a place that you fix up is going to become a nice place for the next renter to live in. And that could be somebody in really bad, bad financial situation. And to be able to move into something that has a little life and happiness to it would just be a godsend. I have always had the belief that each place I fixed up was going to bring future joy to others. Brightening someone else's life when they were going through their own rough set of circumstances that forced them into life in my past rentals. I like the idea of paying it forward and always have karma in action. What you do ultimately will come back to you. Enough said on this point. So let's look at your current rental situation with eyes to what is possible with very little money. The very first thing that you can do for yourself that is absolutely free is to give your rental a thorough cleaning from top to bottom. Not only will this infuse your energy into the space, but it will allow you to become very familiar with all the quirks of your place. And it is so much easier to do some fixing up when you start from a clean and orderly environment. Okay, now one of the cheapest and most dramatic uh, methods of changing your environment is through the agency of house paint. For the most part, if you live in a dump, your landlord will not care if you do a little painting and fixing up of the place, so go for it. Before you paint, you need to examine the walls and get as many imperfections out as you can. You would be surprised at what a difference it makes to fill in all the little holes left behind by other people putting up a picture or two. If you are dealing with situations where holes have been punched into the walls, you can either fix them with the same plaster that you use to fill the tiny holes, or if they're truly large, you can fashion a piece of plasterboard that will fit the hole and nail it to the exposed 2x4 to hold it into place and then pat plaster around the edges. The trick with plastering is to apply several layers of plaster. Do not attempt to put a thick coating of plaster with a belief that you will finish the job in one fell swoop. This leads to back-breaking work in the sanding process. So apply thin layers of the repair plaster. Let it dry and sand it. Keep repeating this process until you have a smooth surface. If you do it this way, it really isn't all that much work. I learned this the hard way, and I'm passing this on to you now. Once you have dealt with prepping the walls, the next step is to paint them in the bright and wonderful color of your choice. Nothing is more dramatic than a fresh coat of paint on the walls of a crappy rental. When you paint, do the cutout first. You take a brush and do the detail painting that's close to the ceiling and floor and around the windows and doors. Then you do the roller paint work. If you are working with latex paint, it's a simple matter to quickly wipe up any paint drops before they dry. 
what I do is I usually have a wet hand towel that lives on the floor as I paint. If I drop, if a drop of paint hits the floor, I use my foot to maneuver the wet hand towel around to wipe it clean. It's, it's pretty simple. A lot of people will use masking tape to ensure the paint does not get sloppy, but I found this to be inexpensive and, and it's not necessary. Just learn to be careful. Around old windows, you can easily scrape any paint boo-boos off with a razor. It doesn't take much. If you're painting with a vivid color, you will need to buy a more expensive quality of paint, as the cheap paint will not cover it. I learned this from experience, and I'm passing it on to you. I painted the exposed uh, sewer piping in a basement bathroom one time in a beautiful, vivid orange color, and it took seven coats of paint to cover it. Buy the better quality paint and you could have the job done in one or two coats. When painting a dump of a rental, remember that exposed pipes and other imperfections will appear to disappear if you paint them all the same color. Also, a good coat of paint will brighten up a beat up kitchen cupboards and make your kitchen a joy to cook in and live with. One of the bright spots about living in crappy rentals through the years is that you gain a tremendous amount of experience in what works and doesn't work. You also gain a lot of personal experience in the mechanics of painting and repairing things in a situation that you do not own, meaning you do not have to live with it for the rest of your life with any mistakes you make. This is invaluable. Now this reminds me of one of my early redecorating attempts. I was living out in the deep bush in a 70 year old shack in the bush. There was no hot water and the tub drained right out onto the ground underneath the house. The floors were nothing but splintered bare wood and the kitchen was painted fire engine red and egg yolk yellow and it was an old paint job peeling just terrible. It was a horrible dump of a place and I was determined to make it a nice place to live in. So I decided to do some painting. Now this place was situated in a very wet climate on the coast of British Columbia. I never considered this when choosing my paint. I was only in my early 20s. I wanted a really durable paint for my bathroom. I was into durability in those years. Anyway, I decided to paint the bathroom in an oil-based marine enamel. The toilet was super old in that the water tank was made out of wood and had been painted years ago and was now peeling and just, just awful. The toilet seat was painted the same way and was so old that the hardware that held it onto the porcelain toilet itself had rusted into an unmovable lump of solidified metal. There was no removing that toilet seat. So I decided to paint the tank and the toilet seat because it was the house's toilet. I did not want to have it out of commission for too long. So I decided to paint the toilet seat with an extra thick coat of paint so that I would not have to apply a second coat. Makes sense, doesn't it? Well, this was a wet climate and this was an oil-based marine enamel paint and it was taking forever to dry. My partner and myself were having to perch on the edge of a super cold por porcelain toilet seat edge each morning to do our morning constitutional and it was just awful. After two weeks of this, my partner decided that the toilet seat seemed to be dry enough to use. So he sat down to do his, his business and the heat of his legs and butt slightly melted the thick marine enamel and when he tried to stand up the toilet seat came up with him and pulled all the hairs off his butt and legs as he let out a scream. When he was finally able to extract his butt from the toilet seat it left the impression of his butt and legs with little hairs left sticking in the paint. We couldn't replace the toilet seat so we had to live with it and when guests would come over they would use the bathroom and come out laughing their guts out because of the toilet seat. I learned a valuable lesson through that experience. Don't use oil-based marine enamel in a wet climate and especially not on toilet seats. 
Basically, don't to paint a toilet seat at all. Replace it or live with it as it is. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscription button right below this video. Well, take care. Bye-bye.